Okay, I just wanted to cover briefly the uh, UC Discounts Alt module. Uh, this is by far and away the most used discount module for Ubercart. And uh, it gets about twice the usage as UC Discounts. And it's, it's actually pretty straightforward to use, but it can be tricky at times. So I wanted to do just a quick overview. Um, you can find it under, once you're assuming you have it installed, you can find it under Configure, uh, Store Administrations, Configuration, Discount Settings. I've already got a few set up. Um, I'm going to create a new discount. Okay, so the basics here you've got, uh, you know, a name that is just specifically for. Uh, admins, it'll just show up in that list as you saw uh, previously, that list, so that's the name that's going to show up here. Uh, short description, now this is actually going to be used uh, during the checkout portion, so this is the short description will be what the user sees uh, when the discount is applied, so make keep that in mind when you use the short description. Uh, and then this description is the internal one that is going to show up again on that list. Uh, can be combined with other discounts. Um, you know, you always want to give that some thought before you check that off or not, because uh, combining discounts can have unexpected uh, results. Um, I, I would think that in most cases, you're probably only going to have one, possibly two discounts, and uh, in many cases they can uh, be combined without difficulty but just keep in mind if you're if you're testing it out and you get weird uh, results it could be because they're combining in a weird way and it doesn't uh, and it's going to require further looking over to make sure it works and the weight functionality may be one of the ways that you do that and this sort of determines in what order the discounts are going to be applied uh, discount expires exactly what you might think it is you're just going to list the date at which the discount ends and this could because the discount can be either um, a particular product or it could be all products you know it could be site-wide you could be doing a 20 percent discount on everything in the store uh, for the month of August and so if you were going to do that you would have discount expires and you would say it would expire on the 31st at uh, 11.59 p.m. on 31st, so that on the 1st of September, <clears throat> the discount is no longer going to be in effect. You don't have to worry about turning it off yourself. It's just going to expire like that. All right, so there's two main portions of uh, actually setting up the discount. First is what are the conditions of qualification? So who qualifies? And then if they qualify, what is the discount? Uh, so there's two basic directions that you can go with qualification, price and quantity. Um, price is generally going to be used if you're going to be doing uh, discount on orders over X amount. Um, if you're doing anything other than that, you're probably going to want to do quantity. So essentially like um, I'm doing a discount off of a specific product, well, you're only going to need to have one of that product in order to qualify for the discount. Um, do you want to require a code to activate the account? Um, in this case, we're going to say no, but the, the idea of the code, of course, is that uh, you might seed a code out, uh, maybe in advertising that says, use this code to get X discount. Um, this seems to be the default behaviors to require the code, but we're not going to want that. Uh, qualification by role, it could be that you have only specific types of users that you would like to get that discount in order to qualify for that discount. Like, for example, uh, maybe you need to be logged in. You know, if you're an anonymous user, you're not going to get it. So um, you would select authenticated user, and then only authenticated users would be able to get it. Um, otherwise, you can just turn that off, and you don't need, you know, it could be anybody. All right. Require single product SKU to qualify. Uh, this is, again, back to the, is it everything or is it just one thing? If it's just one thing, you're going to want to require the single product SKU. 
um, as the help text says, requires products with unique SKUs to meet the qualifying requirements. Otherwise, qualifying requirements can be met by a combination of different products. Let's go back for a second and just say the qualification amount is a single um, item, minimum quantity one. If we didn't say that it was a specific thing, then whatever discount we have down here is going to apply as soon as they put any product into their cart. Um, in this case, we're going to say that we want it to be a specific product, and we, so we select a product from the list that will meet the qualification. So once they put that product into their cart, at least one of them, the, it will apply. You could also have it so that they need to put two of those items into their cart before it applies, or it could be a hundred. It doesn't really matter, but uh, a simple discount would only require one. Uh, discount application. So now we're going to decide what kind of discount they're going to get. Uh, percent off. That sounds pretty straightforward. Um, and but there are different options here. It could be percent off, a fixed amount off, a fixed amount off per item, free items, percentage off per qualifying item. So we're going to say uh, percent off, and then. This amount depends on what you did here. In most cases, you're just going to enter an integer. Um, so it says the amount of discount. So uh, 50 for $50 if you're doing a fixed amount off. Five for five items if you're doing the free items. And this is the only tricky part, and I stumbled over this the first time uh, I was trying to set this off. I was using, assuming that it was going to follow the rest of that, uh, follow the, the other two methods. I was putting straight up like 10 for 10% 10 off when in fact uh, that's not going to work at all because it's looking for a decimal number. So 5% would be 0.05. 10 is actually not good at all. So if we wanted to do 10%, it's 0 0.10 or just 0 0.1. Um, filter by product. Uh, that's just for this listing here. If you've got a lot of products, then you're probably going to want to use your filters to find them. In any case, so now select all products. This discount applies to. Um, so back up here, we selected the one that made it qualify, and now we're selecting what it applies to. Generally speaking, those two things are probably going to be the same, but not always. You might want to say, if you buy this, then you get this at a discount. So it, it's kind of a cool way to uh, have um, you know, fairly complex behavior from a pretty simple list. But in this case, we're going to say PL event test 01. Yeah, we're going to take that one. Maximum number of times applied. Okay, um, this is an important one. It, it defaults to one. And in most cases, that's what you're going to want. It says here does not apply to percent off discounts. Okay, that's fine. Number of times discount can be applied to a single cart, zero for unlimited. Um, stumbled over this one a few times. I thought, well, um, yeah, we'll just apply that, you know, as many times as, as they want. But there can be uh, many situations where, let's say the minimum qualifying item is one, only they put three in there. And if you have this at unlimited, it means it's going to apply that three times, that same discount. So generally speaking, this is probably just going to be one. Um, maximum number of uses. Now this is maximum number of uses that are the discount can be, maximum number of times the discount can be applied. That's overall. So this discount um, think of it in terms of a uh, uh, the first 100 people to purchase this product to get this discount, uh, encouraging people to, to order quickly. So then you would say 100 in there. Um, normally this is probably just going to be zero. You're not necessarily going to use that very often. Uh, maximum uses per user. Do you want the user to be able to get that discount more than once um, over any span of time, uh, well, if you do, then you want to put a limitation in there. Um, if there's going to be a limitation, more than likely it's just one, but I, you know, I don't think you're necessarily going to do anything other than unlimited on there. Maximum uses per code. Now, if you're using uh, the, uh, the code, which is up here somewhere, uh, oh, requires code. If, if you add a code in there, and you only wanted somebody to be able to use that once, then you're going to want to put one in there. And that would limit that. But this is only going to come into play if you're using the code, so otherwise it's not. And then you submit. 
and then we'll go back. We'll take a look at uh, one that we already have created. So let's just go back. Um, I'm going to look at this early bird discount template that I created. So we have this can be combined with other discounts. We have an expiration date and time. And then the conditions, minimum quantity of one, require single product. This is very similar to what I was walking through before. Um, I have a 10% discount uh, on that one event, and it can only be used once. All right, so let's go back, and we'll see that in action. This, all right, go to events. All right, I'm going to get three of these at $5 a pop. So uh, oh, I have five instead of three. Let's change that to three. OK, so three, $15. Three times five, 15. Early bird discount was applied for a discount of $1.50. Uh, that was a 10% off. Um, and that was 10% off the entire order. So $1.50 of, or 10% uh, of $15 is $1.50. Uh, this also had a guest discount, which is essentially um, uh, applied for uh, each event or each uh, guest that they added. And so there was a $6 discount there, $1.50 there, total discount of $7.50. And this is another case where I might actually want to change the um, the uh, weight of these two so that it applies the de guest discount first and then it discounts the percentage off of that. It really depends on how you want it to, to end up in the, you know, how, how you want it to wind up in the end. But in, in this case, it applied this discount, then this discount. And that's it. We're pretty much done.